Daniel O'Brien here and in this video I want to talk about incubators. Now if you never ever want to put a fertilized egg into an incubator and watch it hatch after three weeks, this video is probably not for you. This video I do go into a lot of detail. Um, so for those of you that love detail, you're going to love this video. If you don't want the detail and you just want the headlines, I'm going to give it to you right now. This here is a cheap incubator, $65 from eBay, and it's not rubbish, but it's not amazing. This one here is like a $700 incubator. It's incredible. It's got very, very good engineering. So if you're going to buy an incubator, pay more and get a good one. And here's the basic cost-benefit analysis. This one, if it costs $700, if it hatches 10 more chickens each hatch, so this one only hatches 20, and that's what I hatched the first time out of it, and this one the first time I hatched out of it was 30. So if I can hatch 10 more chickens every time I put the incubator on, and I put it on once a month for a year, that's an extra 120 chickens. If I sold them for $5 each, there's $600 and that incubator is $700. So get something of quality, it's going to pay for itself. But anyway, I'm now gonna go into the detailed version of the incubator review. If you don't like detail, you can log out now and you've got all the detail that you need, the overview. But if you wanna see the detail where I go into the unboxing of the, this incubator and talking about some of the fundamental flaws of this other one, Keep watching, thank you. This incubator behind me I bought five, six weeks ago. I've hatched a bunch of eggs. This incubator is okay. I didn't say it was good, I didn't say it was great. It's okay. I sort of wanna say it's crap, but it does hatch eggs. So tick in that box, it does hatch eggs. But I'm gonna go into a few details and tell you why this incubator it, it doesn't have the reliability and there's a few manufacturing flaws to it. And it wasn't until after I'd hatched that other batch, like I've already put on another batch of eggs, but it wasn't until I got a bit more feedback and looked on some forums and realizing, hang on, this has got some issues. So I bought a new incubator, so I'm gonna transfer all these eggs to the new incubator. But how about we have a look at opening the new incubator. So let's have a look inside this box. So this Barato incubator it holds 49 eggs. So if you're in Australia and want to buy a Barato incubator, you get it from Brook, Brookfield Poultry. I've dealt with Brookfield Poultry. I find them good to deal with. Let's just lift the whole thing out and put it on the bench. So this looks like the lid. I think this goes, I haven't read the instructions yet. Oh, sorry. I've read a few of the instructions online. That looks like it there. So it's a Barato incubator. It's got the auto turn um, eggs, but I'll show you a little bit of inside something that I'm really impressed with. Give you a front view. There you go, there's the front view of this machine. Now I'll show you the impressive thing that I really like about this incubator. There's a few things I really like, but... That's the hatch tray when we're hatching eggs. That's all good. Now see these egg trays? Now these egg trays I really like. And this is what really, really impressed me about Barotto. Um, because I'm all about innovation and, and multi-function and multi-purposing things, these egg trays, they can hold four small quail eggs, like per bay. They can hold one chicken egg, one duck egg, but you can also fit a goose egg in, a huge goose egg. So you've got one incubator that now you can hatch quail, chicken, turkey, duck, and goose. Most 
incubators, if you wanted to hatch quails, you need to go buy a whole set of quail trays to fit quail eggs. Or if you wanted to hatch goose, and you're probably not gonna hatch goose that often, if ever. But if you were, goose, I think they, they geese, sorry, geese lay eggs. Um, they might only lay 12 or 14 eggs a year. I haven't had geese, but I've spoken to people that have. Um, so you might have to hatch some, some, some goose eggs, some geese eggs. I don't know, goose, geese. With the, and you might need to get some specialized trays just for the geese, but you're only gonna use once a year for 14 eggs. Well this, you can just put the goose eggs straight into this incubator and you don't need to buy other trays. And other trays in a good incubator, they could cost $100. So you could have $100 worth of quail and then just your chicken and duck, which are pretty well the same size, duck are a bit bigger. And then you've got um, goose eggs. This is all in one. Now, I love that. They've just thought about it and gone, how do we make it work? Now, it's a big incubator where if you only had chicken eggs, they could have made these all smaller and maybe fit, fit another line in but then it's not multi-function if you want quail. So I really like that system. Something else about this, which I think is great, is with, um, in the bottom of pretty well all incubators, you've got water. Um, eggs need humidity. You can read about that online. And um, you normally need to take the lid off and fill up these little channels of water. And you've normally got to look through all these eggs and that to, to see how full the water is. Well, they've made something different. They've made these little channels in the front here. So I'll just see it down here. So from the outside, you can just fill that up with water. It's got a little hole and then it fills up the channels. So you don't need to open the lid to check the water. You can just see here on the outside, um, the water level and you can get these cool little dust plugs just so you're not going to get because there's obviously exposed water there you can get these little dust plugs that they just sit there and there because you've got a water channel on each side uh, you fill up with water for um, the humidity and that will change based on what day over the 21 days you increase the humidity at the end so i want to show you the lid of the incubator so the lid goes on there. Now all the, you've got a display screen. We're gonna plug that in soon. It's got all your electronics. It's all sealed in behind there. And up in the top of the lid, we're looking into the top of the lid. It's got this tray and I'm guessing this is so when you've got chickens in there, they're not putting their head up against, not that they can reach, but if they could reach or jump, they're not putting their head up into a little heating element. So the heat's coming from above. And then it's got a fan in the middle. Now, I think this is really important. And I'm gonna show you on the other incubator that's not good, all this heating element and fans at the bottom. So when chickens hatch, there's, there's moisture, there's stuff that comes out of the egg, there's sometimes a bit of blood or a bit of yolk or different things. You've got that all going down onto electrical fans and a heating element and the, yeah, the design's not amazing, but I didn't know that. But, and that's why I got it. And I'm pleased I've got that incubator so I can show you that it's actually worth spending a bit more money and getting a good one because you can see straight away, someone's thought this through. So you've got the heating element in there and you've got your fan and these all come pre-programmed. So when I turn this on, this should just get up to temperature and everything else. So that's the lid. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna turn this on, get it up to temperature, make sure all the egg turners and everything else work, read the instructions, make sure I'm putting the right amount of water in, and then I'm gonna transfer the egg from the dodgy incubator to the awesome Barotto Real 49, amazing incubator. I'm quite excited about this, this is gonna be great. So you can see here underneath, these are the water compartments. So we put water in here and there's a hole and this is the shape of the water compartment. And then we've got another water compartment here. So they provide humidity um, during the hatching 
but it can be filled from the outside. I'm just going to practice putting this, um, this hatch tray in. So this is uh, what goes in when we're hatching chickens. And, and just even that, like I love the engineering, just the fact that it covers all the way over, like it just sits in there beautifully and it covers over where you, um, like that water tray. And it sounds something simple, but I've heard cheap incubators, the hatch tray, there's a gap in the side and chickens fall down the side. So just really well engineered and, and really well thought through. I'm, I'm liking it. So I'm just gonna put the lid on now and warm the incubator up. That lid's on. So it's currently saying 21 degrees and it's already preset to 37.7. So for the first 18 days, 19, 20, 21, yeah. So the last three days it changes. So the, for the first 18 days, it's recommended 37.7 degrees. And then for the last three days, I think it's 37.1 or 37.2. I'm just gonna fill up one of these um, drinker, or not drinker, one of these water things and that'll get the humidity up. And then again, on the last three days, I fill the other one up. But for the moment, I just wanna get that up to temperature. So the Barotto incubator is now up to the right temperature, 37.7. The orange light is blinking. That means the temperature's right. So this incubator, I'm gonna transfer all the eggs from this incubator to that one. And on the way, I'm just going to candle them. So in case there's any that um, look like they haven't developed, um, I'll take them out. So we'll now let that um, just stabilize. Now out of, I had, I started with four dozen eggs. As I said, I think it was about 11 days ago. And I've just candled them now and 11 of them weren't fertile. So about one dozen. So I've got just over three dozen eggs left in there. So the front of the incubator has these little viewing windows. And when I first looked at pictures of it, they, look, they didn't look like very big. Like I wasn't happy with it. I'm like, they need to be better. But when you actually get up close to them, they're actually really good. You can actually see quite a bit. I thought, oh, we're gonna have to put like a clear cover on this. But right now, I can see really clearly inside there. So it's actually got a lot of visibility. You're actually getting a little bit of reflection off that lens there. If I take that away, you can see clearly into that incubator and you can see what's going on. So when the, when the chicks start to hatch, we're gonna be able to get really good visibility and see what's going on. So looking through the viewing window, if you actually look up there, that's the fan. So just for demonstration purposes, I'm just gonna turn that off. Just so you can see it spinning. There's the fan and that circulates the air. So that's up the top of the incubator. I've just turned it back on there. And that black ring around the top, that's the heating element. So the heating elements from above, it's got a fan that's pushing that air around. And you've got the eggs down there. And then you've got the, the water point. So this is a little dust cover that goes over the water. And you can see there that it's full. So I don't need to open up the incubator and take the lid off to try and see. And with a lot of other incubators, it's hard. You've got to like look in and see if it's full. So for example, this one, here's the dodgy one. You've got to look down the side there and see if the, there's water. It's, it's pretty well impossible. So I've talked about the Barotto incubator. Now I'm gonna talk about this incubator. So this particular incubator, it's, it's unbranded. This is something I've, um, I've got off eBay. Um, I think in a previous video I said I've paid $65 for it. So it's, it's a cheap incubator and when I got it, I didn't know what the quality is gonna be. Now, 
through using it, through talking with other people that have used this same incubator, when I say it's same, it doesn't have any branding, but you can see the photo of this one. This is often what it looks like. You'll see it online, you can buy it on Amazon, you can buy it on eBay, at different places. I've read forums, spoken to people, and it hasn't always been positive feedback. Rather than going and talking about opinion to say, I don't think it's good, I wanna show you firsthand some real design faults where it's not user friendly. Let's get into it. So firstly, the, the actual auto turner, this is very similar to the burrotto that I just showed you. Obviously you can only put chicken eggs in, like the burrotto, you can't put quail and goose eggs in, it's not made for that. This one holds 56 eggs, so the egg capacity is great. The actual turning of the eggs and the way that mechanism works, I think it's good. I think that's fine. It's a bit clunky getting these in and out, like when you lift these out to try and get them back in, it takes a little bit to line up. But if the incubator just had to turn the eggs, I'd give it five star. It's done a great job at turning the eggs. It's on a motor every two hours it turns them. And that's fine. Um, the, the actual unit, it didn't have very good insulation, so we actually got the the box, the foam that it came in, and we we cut out a little hole for the display, and we used it inside that. We found that kept the the temperature a little more stable um, because we would find the temperature was all over the place. And then when we looked at the design, you think, well, hang on, it's got no insulation, like the the plastic's not real thick. It's it's pretty flexible and um, not really thick. So now what I was finding now, and I didn't pick up this straight away. Sometimes it's after reflection, you use it, and it's like, well, hang on, what actually happened? I put the eggs on the hatch tray when I went to hatch them, and it was maybe ten days after I'd hatched them, and I think I'd cleaned this out. Someone said something, and I still forget exactly what they said. They said they had this incubator or one very similar and the hatch rate wasn't really good. But, and I think they said we had good fertility, but it didn't, didn't have a hatch rate, really good hatch rate. And, I'll, and um, I've got it written down here somewhere. Um, but I'm like, yeah, that's what sort of happened to mine. And then when I was thinking over the next few days, from my memory, the eggs in the middle didn't hatch. The eggs around the outside, like after they were sitting on this hatch tray, they were the ones that hatched. And I'm like, could there be something in that? And it wasn't till I cleaned this thing, which was a nightmare, because you've got all your electricals underneath. So I've got this little thermostat. Oh, I can just take that off. So firstly, I had to unscrew this. This didn't just sit in place, which you think it, they could have made it that it could. I had to undo, not two screws, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And they were tiny little screws. They're sort of the ones that if they fell off the top of your screwdriver, you'd lose them. So that was, that sucked, um, having to clean this. So you've got all the, you've got this fan, and then you've got underneath it a little heat plate that's fed by these tiny little wires. And it's, it's made to a budget. Now, I haven't checked this, which I probably could now. I'm assuming that this fan blows up and you've got a heat pad underneath. So logic will tell you the hottest part of the incubator for the eggs are gonna be the ones sitting on top of it way I would design it, I would get the fan to blow down on that heat pad so your air is going around like this rather than all coming up hitting those eggs and going that way. The other thing about having, like we've got electrics here and you've got water here, like the Barotto incubator, all the electrics, they're up above the eggs and come to clean, well there's that, that's gonna be really, really easy to clean. This, 
I can't hose it out because I've got a motor here which is the auto turner, I've got an electric fan, I've got the heating element which I just noticed that's still hot, I only just took the eggs out. It's sort of really hard to clean and when the chickens are hatching that there's moisture, um, there's like egg yolk or a bit of blood, there's, when the chickens hatch out they're wet. So you've got moisture sort of dripping into these electricals and that's not a good thing. The other thing, now mine wasn't bad, when this hatch tray was in there was sort of little, not that much gap, but to, to be safe I actually stuffed some, some paper towel in the, in the edge there because someone said they had chicks that would go down the, go down the end there, go down the edges and fall through. And it doesn't look like much space, but when a chick's all fluffed up, it, it's, it looks bigger than it actually is. If you actually see a wet chick, it's quite small because obviously it's just come out of the egg. So there's potential, and I've actually got photos from other people where they said the, the chicken's stuck down in there. Now that's going to be a nightmare to, you've got eggs in here, you've got to unscrew those eight screws, pull all the eggs out, pull the chicks out, pull this out, rescue the chicken, and put it all back in and assemble it. So, not user friendly in that regard. The other thing about this temperature, which I've said like it's unstable, the, the, the eggs in the middle, it seemed like those ones didn't hatch. Now maybe some of them did, but if I just had a quick view, I remember the ones around the outside hatching, the ones internally not. So maybe it was receiving too much heat. But if I put a thermometer in, which I've got, that's a digital thermometer. Right now, if I put the thermometer in, it's a different temperature over here to here to the center. It's a different, it's a different temperature and that's not what you want. You want a consistent temperature all the time. Also, it's a different temperature when you've got the egg trays in and the eggs are sitting up a bit further, you can get this temperature perfect. When you take this out and then the eggs are closer to the heating element, I found it a lot hotter. Now when I, when I came to actually turn the auto turner off, it's sort of a case of I didn't have time on the day and maybe that was partly my management to readjust things. So I put the eggs down and I put the, actually sat this thermometer on top of a couple of eggs and I saw it was really hot. Now maybe if I'd had a couple of hours, I could have um, got this thermometer and taken it off the eggs because maybe the eggs were making this hot, sat it next to it on something um, to see the consistency of the temperature. But I, I don't know how or why you would think in, in a unit this small, it would be the same temperature over here than in the middle. It wasn't. So, that was frustrating. Filling the water, I've already talked about. It's great now because we don't have any egg turners in and I can see through, I'm under a bright light. But when you go to fill it, you're sort of squirting water in, hoping you're filling it. You don't know if you're overflowing it, if it's got too much. So not good in that regard. The little display screen, it, it was okay. It sort of did the job. As I said, the egg turners did the job. It hatched chickens, but out of 56 eggs, there was maybe a dozen or two that weren't fertile. Um, so we're probably down to maybe 38 or something, and then only 20 hatched. So I look at that as not very good. I don't know how much was the incubator versus fer fertility. So I don't want to 100% blame the incubator, but I also want to be real to say, this incubator did hatch chickens, but from my experience and then on forums and talking to other people, it's not heaps reliable. The other thing that sort of scared me, um, I put a picture of this up, so how I've got this incubator, has anyone used, anyone like it? A few people said, yep, yeah, it's been okay. Someone said, yeah, I had the chick jammed down the back. Someone said it was midway through the hatch hatch, sorry, midway through incubation, say day 15 or 16, I think they said, and it just stopped, like it, it failed. Now, 
if you've spent money on fertile eggs and you've got 56 of them, you've got like five dozen eggs in there and it fails, that could be costly. Like it would easily, you can go spend over $100 on fertile eggs. In a $65 incubator, I wouldn't trust that anymore, just seeing other people's experience. So I wanted to be real with you and talk it through. I wouldn't say this incubator is 100% bad, where it could be good is if you've got your own chickens, they're not prized possession breeds, meaning they're worth like $500 each or $50 a dozen for the fertile eggs. They're just some backyard chickens you've got at your home. And if it does fail, you're not too concerned. Um, you're like, you're not doing it for commercial purposes. But I've realized now, do you want to go cheap on an incubator? Because it's life and death. If it fails, the chicks die versus if you went cheap on a feeder and the feeder spilt feed all over the ground, it's an inconvenience. We don't want feed spilled on the ground, but no one died. With an incubator, if it fails or doesn't work, it's the difference between having chickens that hatched versus none hatched or it stopped midway through or something failed because it was built to a price. So buyer beware. If you wanna buy one of these, they're not amazing. Yes, they'll hatch chickens, but it's not something to rely on. You're gonna get what you pay for. If you want a reliable incubator, pay a bit more and get something that's gonna last. I'm Daniel O'Brien, thanks for watching.